Welcome to the Jay and Friends Podcast. Just for that. Like, yo, you don't talk about women in my way. You don't. And as soon as... <coughs> 21 Savage, they're going to be the dog shit out of him when he's seen And I believe him, man, as he should. No, you don't do that. You don't do that, man. I told you about that negativity shit, though. That's why I ain't fucking with it. Mm. We ready? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, fuck it. I'm going to sit the opener for I've been forgetting the opener. Let me see what I got. Not just out here enjoying my last day of nature and paradise, but you know what I love more than this beautiful scenery a fresh pair of dick and balls i mean uh, like you ever like drop somebody draws and like it be fr- bitch it be fresh as fuck you be like give me that yeah y'all swear bitches don't like sucking dick no bitch girl we don't like sucking the stank dick y'all swear y'all can take a shit and still get your dick sucked uh no 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 the boo-boo from the oh, hair no. that's in your asshole is still in there so when we drop your pants we smell dick hair and booty crumbs bitch mm. no we want to suck the fresh dick <laughs> did y'all know that they have like baby wipes for men that smell like cologne it's like low-key a whole bath. I ain't gonna call it a whole bath, though. I'm gonna call it a, a nigger rinse. Y'all better start nigger rinsing. Because they got... I'm telling you, get your ass on Amazon. I keep a little baby wipe in the purse for the twat. You feel me? Y'all can keep them in right in your little man purse. Take you a little nigger rinse. Get some hair real quick. I be, thank me later. Babe, it's so... Yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to the Jam Friends Podcast, episode 220. My fault. The Jam Friends Podcast feature now, episode 220. Uh, we are here. We are back for another week. Uh, before we get started, I want to send a shout out to those that wear the uniform, those that wore the uniform, those that wear the uniform in the future. Shout out to those that hang out at the VA all day. Shout out to the United States of Baltimore, Zone, Zone 18. 18. And the rest of the DMV and special, uh, shout out to PG County, man. Um, how was your week? How was your yeah, week? It was, cool. it was cool. It was cool, man. Hey, yo, real quick thing. Hey, yo, I, I mean, I know we're going to speak on it, but like, yeah. I like JC on, yo. Like, J.C. Young is a good rapper. Okay. It's, but it's a butt in there somewhere. <laughs> He's a great chameleon. Like, how he changes his voice. Because he'll be he'll be the game. Yeah. He'll be Meek Mill. Mm-hmm. And now he's Nip. He raps like Nip now. He's Nip now. It was, I was listening to something. I was like, he sounds like Sean. Like, like he, he changes his voice and it'd be like... Pause. Like it's like he got his tongue ring back in his mouth, so he talking weird again. Because the man used to have a tongue ring. That gangster blood definitely gang banger had a tongue oh, ring in his mouth. Hey <laughs> yo, Mister Change of Change of Heart himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. But JC on that's a rapping motherfucker. I can't. Yeah, it is, man. I can't yeah. even hold you. Yeah. But no, my man, my week been cool, busy. Um, even though we've been slow, it was a busy ass week though because they was trying to pump out the numbers. They've been having all types of trying to have contests with different branches, and we had a contest with our branch in Mexico. I didn't even know we had in Mexico. I didn't even know we had sister Mexico? branches. Mexico, which is a Medellin transfer me. <laughs> <laughs> know what I'm gonna go get? <laughs> Coco <Cocoa> leaf. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> that. But no, nah, man, it's just been just been busy. I ain't yo shit crazy. I ain't even get a chance to fire a guy. It, it's been a while. You, you forgot? I, it's been a while. But this dumb motherfucker started working yesterday, bro. Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. He worked. But then it's like he latched on to two other guys that works for the company. And he just, a whole lot of rap for those guys. I saw it, but I'm like, you know, I ain't paying no mind. I'm not training him. He's training with my nighttime supervisor. So today, seen him, spoke to him, asked him how everything went. He was like, oh, it's cool, it's cool. So... After they worked for a while, they went on a 15-minute break. So he was gone. So when I sit at my window, I see all the cars. Parking lot. Yeah. So he was gone for more than 15. He came back like 25 minutes later instead of taking a 15 minute. Okay, whatever, you know. My man comes back. He holding his stomach. Oh, man, I messed up. Where Mike at? Where Mike at? Mike had left. Mike had to take, take care of some work shit. So he go to Danny, my night guy, and he like, uh, oh, man, my stomach hurt, man. I'm going to I'm gonna have to leave. Now, I can hear it through, through the glass, so I'm just sitting there looking like, okay. My man walks out the door. He was on his Kaiser Sosa shit. They were walking. He walking with a limp, but his stomach hurt. And he, uh, as he got closer and closer to his, to his car, my man kept standing up. Next thing you know, my man got the bop and looked at his phone. It was hopping in the whip. 
I can like I can see because I'm set up a little bit. I can see my man hit the motherfucking sunroof, pulled out that bitch, and my man had a nerve to hit the horn. He leaving. His stomach hurt. He hit the horn. Yeah. Sorry, y'all. I, I say, what the fuck? So I'm like, hey, Danny. He like, he give me the cut sign. I say, all right. <laughs> but that wasn't, that. that's not my kill. That's Danny. Yeah. Kill. So Mike, he come in. He, so finally Mike gets back. He like, he told Mike what happened. Mike was like, all right, bet. I'm going to call the agency. Cut him. And cut him. He calls the office like, yo, why y'all fire me? Mike said it was cool. My stomach was hurting. And like, Mike ain't here. Call some, like, call Danny. I, I don't want to talk to him. He called Danny like, yo, what's the problem, yo? Like, I wanted my job. It's just my stomach was hurting. Danny like, man, I don't know. But, you know, so nice meeting you. Yeah, he, he nice gone. meeting you. <laughs> he, he gone. <laughs> yo. Meow. Yeah, but my man really was on, um, what was that, Usual Suspect show? Kaiser Sosa, when he was walking like, he was fucked up. Then mm. he had to get to the car like, yo, yo, really was like bent over and everything, like with a limp and everything, but because the stomach was hurting. The Straight man walked faking. with a limp. Oh. Straight faking. Like, yo, you're an adult, bro. Yeah. Your tummy was hurting. Tummy hurt. Your tummy hurt. He, I mean, he yeah. like, oh. Yeah, it's fucking goofballs. I wish that was my kid. He named the part already, my tummy hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb motherfucker. <laughs> but, um, how about yourself, man? My week was cool, man. Um, what I do? What I do? Uh, all right, so last weekend, um, I went to, I chilled with the old heads, dog. I chilled with the old head. Uh, I went to the concert to see Silk, SWV, um, Drew Hill, and Kim in Atlantic City. Mm. Um, Kim put on a good show. I seen him. It was some, it was some last minute shit, but uh, pulled up. He was with Babyface. The old heads was out. I'm talking about like couples with the matching outfits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old ladies complaining about No, that about. was everybody who put on the show. That was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Drew, Drew Hill look like Wu-Tang right now. Um, Because they got a lot of new members. Yeah. But they bought my boy. They bought uh the, the, the big dude that who who quit for gospel, whatever his name is. Woody? Woody it ain't that? Woody. Woody quit for, quit for gospel. Jazz always with him, though. So no, Jazz is the big guy. He's so, always with but him. But he, he just, uh, Cisco's like, he ain't been there for a while. Then they got a nigga from, um, from um the, the group that's last night. Like they got a, a dude from another group during their time, and they so Cisco's like, I know we look like the Wu Tang, but tonight we have all of the original Miss the original guys is there, but they look like Wu Tang out there. They got a new piece together group. Mm. So I know Woody. Woody had uh, he was singing on like his, on his Instagram. Cisco jumped in the comments like, Yeah, boy, like you ain't even left. What's mm -hmm. up? Yo, yo gave me a look, and I was like, What we doing? Mm -hmm. Like, man, what he like, yo, you can still, like, Al Green still get out that motherfucker and do his thing. You can still love the Lord. And Shout out to Don huh? Trump. Don Trump. Oh, knocking booths. Don Trump be producing some of their songs. Uh, we used to record at his studio in Baltimore. Um, oh, okay. Uh, for the podcast. Um, what else? I so did that. It was that. a good concert, though? It was a good concert. Nobody was fucking with Kim. So it was like Silk Open, then Drew Hill, then SWV. And after SWV ended that shit, niggas was getting up. Like, we got to go. We just go. Drew Hill went on before SWV. Yeah, I I would I didn't think Silk would open. I thought Drew Hill would open up. Oh, Silk can't fuck with Drew Hill. Got more Are you hits. crazy? Got oh. more hits. Oh, you tripping? Got more hits. You tripping? More hits. Keith Sweat wrote them shit. You tripping? That's fine. We still got more hits. What? What? Did, okay. You really want to go to start this shit? Hey, you know you what, you, what? you heard me upstairs. Am I RB bag? About to be RB poppy around this motherfucker. All right, so all right, real quick too. Um, I, we we on vacation next week, so there will not be a part. But I already got the playlist. It's called Back Outside. It will be dropping. But we going on vacation in July. We will give you an episode, but out of the two weeks we gone, but one of them because I ain't coming back early this time. But one of them <laughs> shits will be nails. Mix. Yeah, mom, I'm get my R&B bag. He gonna, you gonna get your R&B bag? R&B bag. So we gonna get 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 you with another one. I mean, roll another the, one. Roll the windows down. Have your little drink. No drinking and driving, but have your little drink. Put your sunroof. <laughs> sunroof. Look back. at your boss. <laughs> Hit the horn on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we added. So we we added. Uh, we added the loop next week. Um, but Kim put Kim puts on a good show. My man be dancing. I almost fought him in a club one time. Kim. Yeah. 
at Derby. And I like yo, Hey, girl. I don't say that shit slick. I like it. It's a matter of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll put on a good show. Yeah. Uh, what else I do? I uh, went in the office a few times this week. And um, just been hitting the gym, man. You know, Me you too. Like, nice. well, I'm yeah. trying yeah. to get that yeah. little gun yeah. show coming, baby. <laughs> Yeah. I was in the mess. I said, well, all right, nigga, I'm yeah. like, right. Okay, buddy. Yeah. 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 All right. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna stay fit, baby. Try. Um, all right, man. Let's get to it. Uh let's go. Uh, oh shit, real quick. Uh hold on, my kids calling me. Hey guys. Hello, father. Hey, I'm recording a podcast right now. Y'all want to say hi to my fans? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. That's it? Yes. Ace. Yes. Say hi. Hi. All right, I'm about to go. All right, bye. Bye. Um, oh, real quick. Uh, shout out. Happy birthday to my man, Ice Cold. Um, happy birthday, big dog. Birthday will be Friday the 17th. Happy birthday to my guy. Now, let's get to it. Um, the VA plans to trim uh, employees um, and senators are, or some senators are weary about what's going on um, during COVID. Excuse me. The VA made a big, big mass hiring because um, they had to still process these claims and, and get uh, get people stuff through. But they, they still do a lot of remote work, which is costing money. And in this influx of um the, the the new uh, budget runs to December 31st. So technically, we could go to the government shutdown again in January. But with the budget and all this other stuff, they cut the VA funding some. So you got to pull, pick out and pull what the fuck you going to do. So it's proposed the VA uh, is planning to get rid of some of the medical staff. Dogs, big dog. Yeah, where, where, like, where does your funding come from? Is, is that like taxpayers? Like, yeah, the VA. Yeah. yeah, that's just straight up just government, yeah, taxpayer money. So you're not you it's not like you paying into a medical fund to get shit back. No, that's straight up like this is what you get for serving your country. But what they didn't what should that, they should should you pay into you think you should or you shouldn't? Like, uh to I, I to think, combat some of these things like this? I think um that's a good fucking question now. I ain't never even thought about that. So I'm a I'm a wing this one. Um for VA healthcare, no. But if if you talk about paying, I think you should have the option to either get free healthcare, which is called Tricare, via, via the military when you active duty or whatever, or you can pay a super low premium and they create a HMO and a PP or a PPO mm -hmm. for you to go to outside network. <clears throat> and of course, then you could take that that said money and do whatever, and then you would ease up some of the stress on the military side. Because people might want to go to an outside provider and go to um, the special people like uh, the dermatologists and the orthodontists and, all, and, you know, the back doctors and all of that. Right. So I think you should pay a lower premium to go to outside. But as far as like the things that they ask you to do and put your body through, you shouldn't have to pay into that to get care, long term care. Mm hmm. You got motherfuckers jumping out of planes and 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 just doing sh wild shit and being exposed to shit that you shouldn't be exposed to, which has long term health effects. Like, um, simple shit is dog going to combat, right? And the the, the, the psychiatrist had to explain this shit to me. It's a gland in the middle of your brain. It's like the size of a pea, right? Every time you experience trauma, that fucking gland grows. It'll never get smaller. So the more trauma and vi all that shit you see, it it just grows and grows and grows. And as it grows, it presses on pieces of the brain, which how some people become detached or just act like they have no feeling towards shit. That's what that glint, that glint, as you get exposed to shit and then people just be, that's, what, that's what's happening. Hence why they put you on medication, because if it is pushing against it, it kind of counteracts it to get either, you know, to keep you cool or to get, you know, like give you some feelings, but the gland will never get smaller; it only gets bigger. Mm. Which is they had to bust that shit down for me. But um, and I I was going off on a tangent, but I think you should have an option to pay for uh 
other healthcare in the uh in the private sector on active duty, but long term care, nah. But here's the thing too. When this shit all kind of started, people wasn't living as long as we lived. And also people were retiring, coming in at 18 and retiring at 38, coming in at 19, returning at 39. So now you got people like me who are in good fucking shape. And I'm going to utilize the VA plus my private shit. The good Lord told me I'm going to live to 93. Knock on wood somewhere. Right. right yeah. yeah. So um, now I'm utilizing this system till I'm not, yo, that's another 50 fucking years. So. That's on taxpayers money. I was, I was, th- I, when I f- saw this and then I got to, th- I was listening to sports talk radio and I always be wondering about like funding. I, mean, I don't want to go off too far. But um, they were talking about the Oreo Stadium is 30 years old. Is it? Yeah. So the or- um, Camden Yard is 30 years old. What was before Camden Yard? Um, Memorial Stadium. Was it right there? Over on, uh, on 33rd Street okay. on the Alameda. Off the, yeah. Right by my grandmother's house. Gotcha. But um, they are looking, and they've said um, the governor is, is backing it, and he'll sign it, that um, they're going to get $600 million. Taxpayer money. To update that stadium, and I'm oh. like, "What the fuck?" Like, I'm literally driving, went to go get some lunch, and I'm like, "Yo, six hundred million dollars." That's normally how I go. It's because it's you. I'm like, "You're gonna raise, you're gonna raise Maryland state tax, and that's why they get the tax and water bills and all this yeah. shit." Yeah, six hundred million. Six, I mean, for a place that, bro, I went to the game the other day. Shout out my man Birdo. It look all right to you? Hidden gems look good to me. Six hundred million. <laughs> Well, they already talking about the, the Ravens, M&T Bay. They, they, they looking they've, at... Oh, yeah. They've already started construction. They uh, On a new one? Yeah. yeah. Not a new one. Oh, adding, the update, the update. adding on to the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. Because they was like, we could build another one or we could update it. And I think they said we could we could go another 10 to 15 if we update it. And then that's that, at that See, point... They want to they wanna move it, but they don't have anywhere really in Baltimore to move it. No, you'd have to just tear it down and play. So, so and play. they want to do that, but they can't. But... The state of Maryland still own a little bit more property on both sides because they right across the street from one another. Yeah. That uh I guess I don't they want to open up some type like retail shops that it's still open all year round, take not just shit. baseball season. Now take that shit back to the old school when the Raiders played on a baseball field on half the football field. You hey. get tackled on that clay. Hey. Ah! Right. That was you was getting really getting hit then. <laughs> but I, I just was wondering about that. Like you say, they need funding for you know the VA. They they losing out money and they gotta lay people off. People gonna lose jobs. Medical staff. And you got over here a, a budget being approved for possibly. They was like it was a bill for four hundred, um, four hundred million then two hundred million. Like what the fuck? For what? For uh, the stadium? Yeah. They got because the money got to come from somewhere. So they gonna put a half a cent tax on something something that you really wouldn't see. But once you start adding the masses to it, you can now, easily like get that money. If you I'm like, all right, you know, that ain't shit, ain't no, nah, you nah, ain't nah. a million dollars. Like, no, 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 no. It's like the Redskins, they they want to build a $2 billion stadium. That's why they need to move. No, nah, no, nah, so, so we're going off a tangent, sorry about that. The old RFK. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was a big deal about them changing the team, right? The team name. They want to go back and rebuild because the, the RFK, the, the grounds it sit on is owned by the federal government. The federal government is like, yo, we will give this back to the team, but it's only one stipulation. You got to change the name back to the Redskins. Which the, uh, then wasn't like, didn't like people, Native Americans come out and say like it was cool? But they also came out and said this is fucking, it, it, I think that they, they played that race card because they didn't like Dan Snyder. So it, it, it shifted and made them change the team. Now, Dan Snyder's not there. You got a good a good ownership group. And it's like, I don't know, change it back. That we cool. Change it back. Like, this shit, that, what they did trickled because remember, the Cleveland Indians had to change their name. Yeah, the Guardians. The Guardians. And then, um, and then that tribe up in Chicago said, like, hold, hold, hold up. Blackhawks. Then we ain't doing that. We getting, we getting our money. We are not changing this name. They, they stood tall. And then all of the, the other teams, Below them that had something to do with it They had to change their name So now all of a sudden it's like No, no, no. Redskins, cool Nah, no, dog no. like, What do you like better? The Guardians or the Commanders? I don't like neither They gotta come up with some other shit 
I, I like the Commanders more than the Guardians. I was like, who the fuck? I, I was looking at something last year. I'm like, yo, who the fuck is the Guardians? Like, because you're the expansion we, team. But I forgot all about like, that the Indians had changed their name. I'm like, the fucking Guardians. But the well, I don't know. But yeah, I don't know what the fuck a Guardian is. The Guardian would have been better here. Like, it's, you know, it's DC we guard the guard Guardians. I don't know. But um, yeah. Oh fuck. Sorry it. about that guy. Yeah. Uh, but since we're talking about the uh. The other government shit, uh, Brother Plies. Brother Plies went off on Joe Biden. I got a clip right here. Let's get it. Go oh, motherfucking find Joe Biden for me right now. And Kamala Harris and the motherfucking Democrats. Welcome Joy to the Joy Reed, some old sounders. I know y'all hate when I'm motherfucking cussing, but I'm motherfucking sick of it. Joe Biden, you just sent out a motherfucking tweet two hours ago. I just opposed a series of tariffs on goods made in China. 25% on steel and aluminum, 50% on semiconductors, 100% on EVs, 50% on solar panels. China is determined to dominate these industries. I'm determined to ensure that America leads the world in them. Congratulate. Now get your motherfucking ass in front of a camera and say the same motherfucking thing, Joe. Visuals go farther than motherfucking tweets. Somebody need to motherfucking tell you that. But he doubled back and said this. I'm in a good mood now. Joe, I don't know what happened between last night and this morning, but whatever happened, I'm all for it. What I asked you to do yesterday and what you did this morning, that's all you got to do. That's it, Ryan. What, what you did this morning, that's all you got to do. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. Since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it <laughs> twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesday. Joe, this, Donald Joe, Trump this all you got to do. This all I asked you to do. I heard people say yesterday, well, he do got the cameras rolling. The media just won't cover it. Damn the media. Become your own media. You got the most powerful pool pit in the world, man. You become your own media. Keep the camera. You can put out a thousand of these clips a day if you want to. Just turn the camera around. And for everybody else who don't want to cover your message, all you got to do is break bread. Fox News will run this clip right now if you broke bread. Let's talk about it. Mm. Oh, Sleepy Joe. Plies. I mean, him and Kamala have been well, we on we know Kamala just she just parties, so I don't know where the fuck she'd be at. This is the first vice president that she gonna have the she she stay in the shop. Just yeah, she you literally don't see. Nope. She she got them girls wearing chucks and pearls for Unless years it's the event. Yep. You don't see Kamala outside me. And y'all also y'all know my feelings about Sleepy Joe. So um I guess it's about his time for he just run around and say we're going to continue to keep, uh, what is the student loan shit? That's his. I think this is his only thing that he got going for himself. Is keep, uh, keep saying it. Has he done anything about he that? He banned shit? In TikTok. Uh, and then the student loan shit. I, I think like this is that. But is it a ban on TikTok or is it just the, the ownership has no, to change? They, right. Yeah. If you, the, they don't change ownerships to the U.S., then it's, they're gonna ban it. But. To me, is Plaza makes a great point. Democrats are not standing up and saying what needs to be said. They ain't even lying. They just ain't saying shit. Because they know Big T coming. They know Big T coming. And they also, they, they, they feel comfortable with the black and brown vote, period. Yes. They, oh, well, well, black and brown people are Democrats. We got them locked. The only one that ain't locked is black and brown women. That is the swear. But men is good, like, and the thing is, is they've been quiet. Now all of a sudden, in that clip he showed, Sleepy Joe look alive. Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen. He like he drank a couple Red Bulls, a couple Five Eye Energies, and, and some water with lemon. He like he mix. looked alive. That was early in the day. Yeah, he yeah. looked alive, and like he looked like he could like skip to the plane and run up the stairs. Like he <laughs> he looked alive. No, he might could have walked up without holding on. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't look too far. I wouldn't look too far. But he looked alive, and um, and if if Plaza is a Democrat, then he absolutely he has a platform, and yeah, go off on him. But they they the Democrats feel entitled. They feel entitled, and um, and and. That's about yeah. That's about as deep as I'm gonna go. But uh, they they dropped the ball just as a as a as a collective. Him and Kamala. But I think what Kamala is doing is she knew she was fucked going into this. So she was like, "Let me shut the fuck up, do my time, 
after these four years, we're going to lose. I'm going to take four years off, and then I'm going to run again. But she's still going to have to answer the question of why the fuck was you quiet? Because four years off ain't going to fucking change the fact that you did four years. You had women wearing chucks and pearls, and then you didn't do shit. Like she don't talk. Nothing. At least when 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 Obama was dead, you had Joe talk. That's why Joe. everybody felt so good about Joe. Yeah, because they like that. He outside. Yeah, you even had Mike Pence around this bitch talking, talking. a little bit. Like, yeah, Kamala, what? Hell no, she partying. She had the brunch. I know she didn't use all her PTO days like Nika. What? <laughs> ASAP. I need off this day, this day, this yeah. day. Yeah. Um, um, I know this wasn't on the dock. I ain't seen him, but like uh, Brandon Scott in Baltimore. He won his Democratic nomination the mayor? for the mayor. Yeah. Okay. That's the oh, young boy, right? Yeah. He rerunning again them. Time went by quick. Quick, yeah. Yeah. So it like he just, he just won. won the nod over Sheila Dixon. She um, beat did she beat them charges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She I mean, not, yeah, no. Okay. But she was good to run though. Yeah. He what how how what was the margin? He won by a lot, a little? I think it was like fifty seven or forty seven percent. Oh yeah, he blew out. Something. A little blow out. A little but, um, blow out. Um, even though I'm from the city of Baltimore, I don't live in Baltimore, so I don't have a vote for the mayor because I live in a county, Harford County. So, um, I've been around, I've seen, um, things that Brandon Scott have done and I've also seen Sheila and I felt Sheila's, um. More than Brandon? Yeah. I feel like just, just optics. I feel like Brandon is more with the people. He outside, he, he touching young. them. Which is maybe but Sheila why. was also that, but like Sheila would be outside. Brandon literally be outside at the party, like on the corners. He's at the white party. He's DJing literally on the ones and twos. He partied at Jimmy's Christmas party last year. He was there for that, like party. Oh, he like, outside, outside. He's outside, outside. Okay. Um, that's why people feel like they can reach him and touch him. But people could felt the same about Sheila though. Sheila's been around, which is Juan Dix's aunt. So yeah, they're not the max boxes. And <laughs> and people, I remember Moravia Road used to be fucked up, and there used to be a sign outside, big ass sign. Somebody, Sheila Dixon, fixed this fucking road. She fixed that bitch. Yeah, Moravia used to be fucked up, fucked up. Like you fucking and bust a tie on that road. It was other things she did around the city that she just got things done. I don't think it's too much that. Besides locking shit down, like it's always gonna be crime in Baltimore. It's just that's what it is. It's just what it is. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how much do you you put that on the mayor or not. I mean, it's their city, so you gotta put it on the police chief and come up with an idea. But I mean, motherfuckers is gonna just do shit. Only time we didn't have crime is when the Freddie Gray shit was going on and the fucking military was standing on every single fucking corner. That was the only time crime was down. I had you had M sixteens. Only yeah, outside. sitting outside like what the fuck? Me, I was outside. I didn't give a fuck. I pay, I pay your shit. No, wasn't going in the house. Nope. He was like, you crazy, crazy shit. A curfew. I'm a grown ass man, dog. I pay taxes. It's no, I'm never gonna have a curfew. It's, it's always that one, y'all. It's, it's America. Al- it's always I'm that in one. fucking America. No, you're not. You in the United States of Baltimore. A hundred percent. That's why I did what the fuck I wanted to do. The fuck. Oh, but shit. yeah, he won. I'm not mad at it. Um. He says he has plans to do stuff, um, open recs and do stuff for the youth. I listen to some of his stuff. I know, like, I wasn't a big fan of him and, like, the squeegee kid shit. Like, he wanted to try to find, like, the really kind of sort of, like, keep them doing squeegee shit. I hate that squeegee shit. Yeah, don't fuck with my car. That shit irritates I just the life my car. out of me. You want to like, come put that? Yeah. These adults, especially when there's adults, the kids, eh, can't help the kids try to get a dollar. But them yeah. fucking adults that's out there, like, bro... If you don't get the fuck out my face, but me, I tell them little fuckers like I tell everybody else. KS is job call. You want some money? Go to job call. You know how I now got money? I went to job call. So, send their asses to job call. Go to job call. Like, yo, how old you? I be asking me, how old are you? They don't be trying to hit none of that shit. I'm like, yo, I don't have no money. Like, you got cash app? No, nah, Lord. They got no <laughs> motherfucking cash yeah, app. They, got, they took that shit from the strippers. But, I mean, though, shout out to Brandon Scott. I mean, hopefully he can do some things for the city. Definitely open up the wrecks because that's one of the things that kept me out of trouble as a youth. That Because the wreck that I went to is it's damn near closed now. Like, the pool. The pool is not open anymore. For real? The, yeah, the pool is closed. And that was, the like, the best thing between the pool and the basketball court. 
And being in a rec playing bumper pool and hooping and inside the gym, like that really kept me out of trouble. Like, yo, you be going up the court, like everybody, that's where we all went at in that neighborhood. So hopefully, which these kids don't know shit about, they really don't come outside, but what they really don't know about is the you know, going to the rec and just go chill and have fun and have activities. So yeah. I think they definitely need to bring that back. And get the funding for it. You can get fucking six hundred million for that dumbass stadium <laughs> that don't be packed. Like yo, I'm literally was at the Olds game Monday, bro. Like yo, there's no one here. We really probably didn't even have to pay for these fucking seats. We yeah. could have paid two dollars for upstairs and walked walk down. Walk yeah. down. Yeah. So whatever. All right. Um. Uh, DEI leader, the former uh, DEI leader, uh, since a multi sentence for a multi million dollar fraud at Facebook and Nike. Uh. Barbara Furlow Smiles, once a prominent figure at the corporate in corporate diversity and initiative at Facebook and Nike, has been handed a 63 month prison sentence for uh, siphoning off more than five million from these companies. The sentencing took place on Monday, um, leaving the former uh, DEI. If you don't know what DEI is, it's, it's uh, diversity, inclusion, and uh, whatever uh, leader with a hefty price. I'm gonna pay for criminal actions. Uh, the judge uh, remanded her to pay back the full five five point one million dollars uh, during her uh, during her emotional address to the court. She expressed the gravity of the situation, declaring it a fight for her life. Um, I ain't never seen nobody have to pay all the money back for a white collar crime. All of normally you have to pay back like a little like a mil one point five. Like even when you do like tax shit, like the PPP shit, they don't make you pay all that money back. You pay a little portion. Damn, she got to pay the whole 5.1. I don't be understanding. Like, they say back in 2017, it started at Facebook. She abused her access to corporate finances to support a lavish lifestyle across Cali and Georgia, indulging in luxuries from specialty portraits to preschool tuition. Like, when people be going to the well, I always... Like, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. now. I, I know how they do it. I'm going to tell you how. You get a corporate credit card that don't got no limit. And you really be on that fly shit, that's like being Jay-Z with a black card. And then on top of that, you could justify, you, well, not, you can't justify it, but you can get over on what you spending that shit on. Like, you could fleece that shit. Oh. All right. So I, I, I got something like kind of like that. So, boom. It is what it is. So, at the job, we used to have gas cards. All right. So we used to have two, one for Shell, one for Exxon, just in case we are out of range for somewhere that um, we couldn't get regular fuel from. At that time, we was with Penske. Now, as a driver, you should always have fuel, especially when you know where you're going at. So um, anyways, I broke my leg. At the time, the job didn't have short-term disability. I'm the reason why we have short-term disability because I fought for it. I'm like, yo. I broke my leg, even though it wasn't a job fault. I was playing basketball, and I broke my leg. So, but I wasn't going to be paid I, after um, I used all my PTO time. I didn't have any money, so and I couldn't do anything. So once my PTO time ran out, I didn't have any money, and then at the time, um, my 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 roommate because we had I had a, we had an apartment together. He still was looking at me to make sure that I had to pay all my bills on time. That's another story for another day. <laughs> but so all I did was knew, do what I do best, hit the trap. I got a rod and three screws in my leg. Hey, my credit was always good. Flip it. But I had a gas card. So when I was broke, I didn't have any money. I didn't have two fucking nickels to rub together. Um, I ain't even going to cap. Like, I did him a favor. I literally had no money in my pocket. I told him, like, yo, I'm riding around, burning up my gas, and I'm doing a favor for you. You know, can you get me something to eat? I'm telling him, like, yo, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. He didn't get me anything to eat. Who, your man? Yeah, this is my guy. We we live together. We have an apartment. Like, it's my guy. Oh, like, that dude. Yeah. yeah. My man, 50 grand. And like I said, I didn't have any money. I'm And at the time, I was going to work every day, but all my money is gone now. Hustle money, I wasn't hustling no more. None of that shit is gone, right? So... I called my mom like, yo, I knew some money was going to come in. This was probably like a Wednesday. I just needed to make it to Friday. But I had nothing. Like, mom, let me get $20. So I tell her the situation. She's like, oh, no. I was like, no, mom, just give me $20. I'm going to be good. Friday, I'm back. 
It's right now. Nigga, I'm in McDonald's literally crying. I cause I had no money, bought me something to eat. I'm sitting in McDonald's, in the back of McDonald's. I was living out Essex. Crying and shit. It was fucked up. But I had that fucking gas card. So long story short, I used that gas card from the time I broke my leg to like two years later. I used that whenever I needed gas, I used that <coughs> excuse me, guys. Got your phone. Yeah. Um, I used that goddamn gas card. And I used to be nervous at times because now that I was back, I went from a Honda Accord. Now I'm getting. Now I got that V8 back because I was back lit. Hit the block, which you do best. <laughs> fuck, fuck that. I'm back. Like Mortimer, boy. I'm <laughs> back. <laughs> so, um, I always said like I would never sell gas or let someone use my gas card because I felt the karma would come, and I was like, pause that I would get caught. And they were like, and cause I used to go, I used to be ignorant with it. I used to let the fucking car just run. Like, yo, you gonna turn your car off? Nigga, Hell I no. ain't paid for, for gas. Sure. And boy, I, I'm gold and everything. Boy, it's 93 going to this bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can see how people like, you know, like them run it up because it's so easy. And it's like, don't nobody say nothing. And it's like the first couple times, if someone says something, it's like, I got an excuse. What they say something about the charge? If they say something like, Did yo, they ever say up? anything? No. Never? Ever. Y'all it's supposed to keep the receipts and all of that shit? Supposed to. They just paying the bill. Nep, yo, I, I ain't pay for gas for like three years straight. Didn't pay hey, for gas. Yo. Until the it was time to get a new one. And they didn't renew nobody cards. Like I saw the stack of cards in the office. I was like, yeah. Them shits ain't never come through. I was like, yo, what happened to the, I mean, what happened to the gas? Well, they said, oh, no, nah, they, they 86, that shit, that shit did. I'm like, what? Like, you, so, should, you shouldn't be running out of gas anyway because you get, you, the gas is there. Gas is where? On site? Because we can go, no, we go to any Penske, at that time Penske, but then we, by that time we switched to Rider. Go any fucking Rider in the world and go get fuel. So, so you got to go to Rider to get gas? Yeah. Um, but there's a fucking Rider everywhere. Yeah. And if you're a truck driver, bro, get fuel before you go out on your route. Like, there's a Rider literally 20 minutes from the job, 15 minutes from the job. That's crazy. But yeah, I, so I, I can understand how some people, when they get into a job, they can run it up and run some shit up. That shit happened. But, it's 63 months, though. It's like six and some change. 72 is like seven years. I'm doing the math, but 63 months. And yeah. you had to pay back 5 point what? 5.1. 5.1 million dollars. Yeah. All up, five five million one hundred two thousand eight hundred and sixty eight dollars and eight cents. They ain't round that bitch up. They made sure I want every penny. She was wearing their ass out. She, she damn sure did. She ran it up. Facebook on. to Nike. Hell yeah. yeah. She knew what she was doing. Diversity, equality, and inclusion. She probably if she stayed at Facebook, she'd have been good. She went to Nike. Nike checked the yeah, books. Did, that way. Wait a minute. I like how you did that. Check the books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. All right. Uh, well, since we're talking about money, um, a study just came out that the housing market, uh, let me pull it up. Um, so recent reports on the U.S. housing market states that prices have soared 47% since 2020. This is a couple, because we've said this on a few a few topics on a few episodes where it is cheaper to rent than to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Reggie Club, recent examination of the case Schiller National Home Price Index revealed a staggering jump in U.S. home prices, which have risen by 47.1% since the beginning of the decade. The boom observed in the early years of the 2020s has surpassed not just the growth of the 90s and the 2010s, but is currently on track to outperform the whole 2000s. Even the lofty heights of achieved, uh, lofty heights achieved before 2007 property market crash are within striking distance. Um Yo, is owning a house still the American dream? No. Owning a house ain't the man. Look, that, that's so now we talk. Now this boy ready to part. Let me sit up a little bit. Now, hell no. Owning a home is not the American dream. Being married is not the American dream. And women having kids in a family ain't the American dream. I literally know women who say, I just want to fucking party, go to work, and smoke hookah. I don't give a fuck about. My fuck fucking them, kids. Fuck them kids. You fuck them kids. I'm going to pay my school loans off. I know I'm going to be paying on this shit forever. I'm going uh, to put them in forbearance when I can and make the minimum payment for the rest of my life. That's it. I really, I know this. 
Um, so no. And then on top of that, like, and, and we gonna cut this up because I want you guys to answer in the comments though. Like, is is owning a house is that still the American dream? You know, maybe for you is that still your dream to like that you want to own a house with all these percentages that's going up in these rates? That's like because it's not a buyer's market at all, and I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon. So, you know, are you down to be paying this thirty five hundred dollar mortgage for thirty five? Thirty five. <laughs> Uh, 35 Four, 35 hey, I okay. mean and that, that's kind of on the light end like 35 that's depending on where you at that's I'm gonna be a little transparent man uh, do I want to be transparent no, no I'm gonna talk a little bit circles um closed on the house last July right was not a good time to buy. Oh, your shit is different, motherfucker. You was living in fucking it's a la, million dollar la, house. La, 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 yeah, yeah. Know this bitch. <laughs> Dog. Do you know what the mortgage on the house was? I'm gonna be transparent now. You know what the mortgage is? What about eighty two? No, it's up more than that. More than that? Yes. <laughs> so that's all I'm gonna say. So you talking about? But the same thing. If I'd have bought my house when Tay bought his pre pandemic, you know what that mortgage would have been? What? About thirty two. Wow. It's all in the or if you caught it. Huh? You hear me? Yeah. All right. Did you, or if you'd have caught it like that cold, because when COVID hit, when nobody wasn't buying anything, couldn't buy anything. But the rates was the still rates up. Was, it was? Yeah. I know for cars, that shit was crazy. Like, I remember when I oh, went yeah. and oh, yeah, my was knowledge, he was like, man, that shit would have been 1% if you'd have got this shit yeah. a couple months ago, like yeah. a year last year. Like yeah. 1%. I was like, what? But I mean, I still had a great rate, though. People but. who at like, they were, yo, they was buying a house at 0.8%, 0.1%. Like, they, you was less than a percent. So now you at. Eight percent. I think we're like. I think my mom were like seven. Or no, it might be like six point seven. Dog, that's a lot when you talk about a million dollars. Six percent on a million, and it ain't just. Oh no, okay. If your house is a million and it's the six percent, so it's the six. No, 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 no. That's compound daily shit that goes in the escrow. Like yo, that shit. The hot, that shit is a big ass fucking scam and scheme. Know how you do that? Now a lot of times people be buying the houses and you don't own the land. You you leasing the land from the county, but you own the house that the land sit on, mm-hmm. and it varies by state. But like in Texas, you I do you own the land in the home. I don't think in Maryland you own the land. I don't think not not in the cities anyway. Maybe in the like out in counties, but if you in the city limits, you ain't you don't own that fucking land. So you yeah, might own the house that like, shit. I want to buy a house. I mean, that's one of my dreams. But I mean, if it's not realistic, as far as like the pricing, because the because I look all the time here and there, I jump on, you know, these housing sites, and I just I just peek, you know, I, I just see what's what's out there, shit you know, crazy. and yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So it's like, I, I, do you, do you rent? And I was second guessing myself signing them papers. You don't. Um, <laughs> you don't have to. Uh, you ain't got to deal with all the things that come with owning. So if something break or something fucked up, hey, come fix it. Mm-hmm. Opposed to when it do fuck up or some pipes fuck up or something happens that you are on the hook for that bill. And you have and homeowners ain't uh, insurance ain't covering that bullshit. So I remember his water pressure was low in the master bathroom and we couldn't figure out why. So I had to come pay a I had to pay a, a plumber to come and diagnose the shit. So that's three grand. And then he kept trying shit and trying shit and trying shit till we got damn that three grand into it. And then he figured out the, the nigga, the nigga took Mama No call. He cut the wall open. See what Mama No got to say. Hey, Go hey, ma, ma, hey. what's up? What's going on? Nothing. I'm on the podcast. What's up? Oh yeah, I forgot. Mom, right. hey, Mama Nell. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. All right, my just a quick question, man. We talking about housing, right? And I know you know we've had our talk about housing. Um, and you about to be you on like kind of both sides because you were thinking about you know selling one house and then you know you already have another house. How how do you think it is in this market? As far as like is right now the Amer- is the American dream? Is the American home? dream to own a house? Is in twenty 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 four. I mean, I know you you have you, you own multiple properties, but like, do you still think that that's the American dream to own a house, opposed to just renting? Own it, yes. And I know you guys are probably saying no, but yes, 
that's the better way to do it. Why make somebody else rich? Why allow someone else to send their kids to college and have these fabulous vacations and cars and all the luxury shit that you guys are sitting back dreaming about while you're renting? But opposed they're to not just renting, they're paying, you're paying the mortgage for that house and you're putting money in their pocket. So the their mortgage, say their mortgage is if the house is paid off, say the mortgage is nine hundred dollars, but they're charging you two thousand. Word. That's good business. So who's winning and who's losing? So I would always say buy it. Got you. Well, that's Mama Nell. Words from Mama Nell, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'll call you when I get out the pod, man. I love you. Love you All too. Right, baby. Bye. Bye. That is. Uh, I I could agree with that. Um, Stop pocket watching, Mama Nell. <laughs> 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 Don't hate the player, hate the game, yeah. baby. Because uh, guess what we gonna do when she move? We gonna tax these numbers. <laughs> 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 we didn't already came up with a number. I said, oh yeah, that's what we gonna get, mine. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what are we oh, gonna get? <laughs> uh since we oh yeah, since we talking about property, right? Uh they just came out with a list of the richest yeah, black neighborhoods in America. Um, and I got it right here. It's pulling up. Uh top ten richest black neighborhoods in America. Coming in at number 10 is Cedar Hill, Texas, uh, 52% black population, 51% college educated, 71% homeowners, 93,000 average income. Randallstown, Maryland came in at 9, 89% black. God damn. Yeah, that's Baltimore. Um, 40% college educated, 60% homeowners, $100,000 average income. You got Stone Mountain, Georgia at eight with 107 average income, 67, 62% black. Uh, Florissant, Missouri, at a damn, you living now, you living good out there, Missouri. 110 average income, 58 percent uh, populated. Bloomfield, Connecticut, uh, 58 percent black population, 110 average income, 70 percent homeowners. Cambridge Heights, New York, 58 percent population, 110 average income, 92 percent homeowners. Number four, Olympia Fields, Illinois, 70 percent black. 80% homeowners, 133,000 average income. Number three, Washington, D.C., 68% black population, 57% college educated, 67% homeowners, and 158,000 average income. Baldwin Hills. Baldwin Hills, California. Yeah, shout out to the Ball Brothers. Uh, 76% black populated, 63 college educated, 63% homeowners, 151,000 average income. In, in, at number one. Hmm. Guess who used to live in Bowie? Bowie, Maryland. 88% college educated, 60%, uh, no, 88% population, 60% college educated, 85% homeowners, 174,000 average income. Bowie took over as the richest black Neighborhood in the same area. What a county is trying to same area. Tay <laughs> live in same area. No, I don't think that's Bowie. Is that's that Bowie? close? Close. That's just yeah, yeah, that shit is right there. <laughs> yeah, roll over, yeah. That shit is right around the corner. Yeah. And, and, and that million dollar house you were talking about? And my shit is right on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> that million dollar house? Right on the cusp. That shit count. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh shit, congratulations, man. All those people who live out there. That's a that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Home I can see Bowie more than like Gaithersburg. Gaithersburg is so diverse. It very diverse. Very, very so I can, I, diverse. I can see that. But yeah, Bowie is. I can see Bowie being lit. Number one, that's that's crazy. But DC though. DC, I mean, because the cost of living percent black population was sixty seven percent. Because the cost of living is so high, it's people making money. One hundred fifty eight thousand average income. Yeah, yeah, no motherfuckers making money. I wonder is that per, that's per house, average home income. Yeah. Gotta be, gotta be. Gotta it gotta be, be more than that. Nah. I mean, if you go, well, I mean, if you go on, uh, if you go, you know, like a couple, like a family, like that's what you. Well, unless you know they on that. Well, my husband pay for well, everything. It, well, it's average. You averaging, so even still, you you dividing. 
So I guess that's still and a lot of fucking even money. Calif- uh, even California, nobody nobody cl- eclipsed two hundred. So of no. course, so again, so yeah, you still taking it and you dividing close, it. Close though, one seventy four. Yeah, it was close, yeah, but it still eclipsed two hundred. So yeah, man. Again, round of applause, man. Uh, let me see what else I got on. I got on the on the docket. Uh, uh here we go. I got something for you. White people be still in the best, shit. and then they call it American history once they like it. It's black history once we do it, and then once it get popular, they become American history. Mm-hmm. They did it with gumbo. They did it with chicken wings. Yeah, bet y'all didn't know chicken wings was a struggle meal. Yeah, that's what they used to feed Negroes. Now we'll take the rest of the tender, juicy parts of the chicken. Take the arms. That's what you eat. You can eat some chicken arms. Lemon pepper. That's all the thing is. The chicken arm. Do your hand like this. That's exactly how that goddamn wing look. All the chicken splurged Omega. <laughs> we was eating chicken arms. We did that so good. White folks was like, what you, what's that that you did to the arm? They gonna partake. What, what's that season? Lemon pepper. Oh my God. <laughs> Honey, try this. It has lemons and peppers. Oh my God. The Negroes. They're so ingenious. White people be still. <laughs> stupid. Uh, Chili's. Who's talking about chicken? <laughs> Chili's is closing down doors. I never ate there, but uh, Chili's is cro- closing down doors across 2024. Uh, the the owner of the Chili's uh, franchise has had a rough 2023 and is shutting down Chili's restaurants across America. Uh, what we what we say about this? Well, it says it's not closing all locations. I'm looking at it now. Fact, they did a fact check. They're closing a lot of them motherfuckers. They but say it's not. Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, St. Joseph, Missouri. Charlotte, North Carolina has shut down so far this year. Like, ain't nobody eating in no goddamn chili. I've never ate that. I mean, shit, if I haven't had um, Hooters, you know, damn, when I ain't been to fucking chili. You been to nothing, boy. Them Still Hooters. ain't been to Hooters. Tripping. You, tri- you don't even like them chains, but them, them Hooters. You know, they Still that ain't nothing. Like and that, it's crazy. As much as I used to want to go to the one, Laura. of course, downtown. Nah, downtown in Baltimore. There's always been one in the harbor. For real? Never been. Yeah, it's always one. Yeah. Hell yeah. I never knew that. Always been, never been. It was upstairs. Always mm. been, never, never been. Remember the ESPN um, zone? Hell yeah! I remember they put me out lit. one time. Yo, them horse. <laughs> yo, <laughs> for what? Monday night football young. used to be lit in that too shit. Young, boy. You had to be eighteen. Oh, you was there when you was young. So I had um, Mama Nell dropped me and my friend Barry off down there. She walked us in, got us in. So we in that plan. She rolled out. I think she she rolled out too fast. Next thing you know, they walk up on me and my man, like, where your parent go? You're like, oh, she probably went to the bathroom or something. Like, no, she left, like, yo, yo, clock there. Like, she left like 15 minutes ago. Like, oh, why right, she probably be back? You're like, no, nah, y'all gotta go. Put, your eye. Put us out. Damn. I was mad as a bitch. Like, yo, we went. Yep. Mm. That's mm. what I miss about, I don't know what you were talking about it here. I think so. But that's when we were talking about um, how David Buster's. Used to be when back in the day when it was Jillian's and it was like a adult arcade and we could have fun because you had to be over 21 to be in that joint because they were serving alcohol. So it wasn't all them goddamn kids in there. Like it was real adult fun in there. Like adults need fun too. I like having fucking fun. They do. So, you know, playing some games and shit was lit with the music playing, but now, you know, that shit is 24 hour fucking kids. Damn. Uh, well, prayers and wishes to Chili's. Give a fuck, but whatever. What the fuck? What the fuck did you ever eat at Chili's? If y'all ever went to Chili's, what did you eat? Like, I know it. Good? I know what, it. What I remember the thing song, Chili's Baby Bag Ribs. You remember what that shit? That barbecue sauce. Yeah. Oh, all right. I ain't never been to Chili's. I ain't never been to Chi Cheese. Chi Cheese. Fuck is that? That shit was just like Chili's. Chi Cheese. Oh, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't never been to Chi Cheese. Um, that was Chili's with the baby bag, baby bag. That was yeah, yeah, that's it. Nah, I'm good. Love it. Uh, I need them Jack Daniel ribs. I'm going to, I was going to Fridays. I wasn't. Why the fuck I was going to go to Chili's? Go to Fridays. Let's get to. Is it in here? I don't think I got the link in here. Let me see. Dame Dash. Oh yeah, Dame Dash. Dame yeah. Dash. Like 
the industry is just sick of Drake. It just seems like it. Like so I didn't know it was Dave so Dash much hatred, from, that, not hatred, but like um, so many different people that are in the industry have sort of. He said that him. the Kendrick and Drake beef is the I best beef ever. So many people that had problems with him. A lot you know of people I mean? speaking up now. Yeah, you know, call, call like, saying all that shit came out his camp. Yeah, I'm like, damn, it's, and and that and and that's what hurts is like when when someone can say, yo, your crew hates you, and again, I don't know, but as a battle. This has been the best battle well, yeah, yeah, yeah. of all time. I'm gonna say this. I've been through, I've been here in hip hop for a while. This has been the most impactful battle to where it looks like the battle songs are changing the trajectory of that artist's life. Mm. It just seems like things are different for Drake right now. You know what I mean? And I've never seen this happen before. And this shit was real. I mean, it yeah. turned into- What we got? He just said this last week. I said it. I said it. I think this was the best battle of all time. And in, in, in so far, what we've witnessed. And no shade to to them because they did. They were they were cutting albums with reels. Like you had to get real and you had to do all this other shit. You couldn't really go to the studio. You had to go to the radio if you wanted to put out a rebuttal in the radio. You know that was over somebody else's beat. But literally, you drop a song, then I could drop a song. Another day, or I could have like Kendrick. I already got what I'm gonna put out, mm -hmm. and it's gonna step on your shit. We never see nobody get their shit. Imagine if Jay Z stepped on Ether the day he put it out. Especially when you know it's gonna. You drive. know it's gonna come. That I and again, that's like comparing Jordan to LeBron. Like, okay, he didn't play where they they could hand check and all this. It, it ain't their fault. They just do. You, you dealt you you on the playing field that you on, and that's why I think that what made this battle. The best. It was like boom, 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 boom. And we didn't think that Kendrick was going to drop fast. And Kendrick was on his ass. Well, because it took him a while to respond. Yeah. Drake was talking shit. You know, he was feeling himself like, yeah, this bitch ass nigga. And rightfully so, because he only put out an album but once every five years. It's taking you two weeks to respond. Like, mm -hmm. the fuck is you doing? And then, drop and do some push ups. <laughs> and then he was like, don't worry. No, <laughs> I was getting ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting ready. I mean, I guess so. I mean, I know people. Drake has the the Steph Curry effect, the Tom Brady effect. Ooh, good analogy, right there. Yeah. Within the like, you know, I'm just tired of this motherfucker winning. And that's what I was trying to tell Willie Brown. I was like, Drake was in the lose lose. It's like Alabama. You, they recruit, they do everything they need to do, but they just so fucking good. It's mm -hmm. like. Let somebody else win for a change. Mm -hmm. But you know that they're going to win. But when they lose, it's like magnified times mm -hmm. a million. I mean, look at it. Fucking coach and retired. He like, fuck this fuck NIL. This shit, yeah. I can't I win. Can't, yeah, I can't win no I more. I can't get the best guys all the time now. Now, nah, fuck, fuck this. That. I'm out. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 the uh, it's the winning effect. You're just tired of this motherfucker. And then he's won all the battles that he's faced. Like Other than push? Well, yeah. Other than push. That made him become a father. Like that shit is <laughs> man. Said made him become a father. That man became a father. Push said you are hiding a child. And next thing you know, that man was a father. Mm, mm, mm. You saw that little boy all over the place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he lying. No. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck he say he was hiding his son from the world? I wasn't hiding from, from the world. I'm hiding from uh some slick shit he said. The world from my kids. Yeah, I was hiding the world from my kids. <laughs> I'm like, whatever, bro. Um, I think it was a good battle. Um, social media blows everything up, so I got like irritated by the battle quickly. Yeah, we had that conversation. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm in one of my moods, one of my social media moods right now, any fucking way. So it just blew it up so much, and I just got tired of it because every blog, every single thing that you scroll down, you see it, even on Twitter. And I never have anything bad to say about Twitter, but even yeah, that no. shit, I just was like, yo, yeah. what the fuck? Fuck, Negative. fuck them motherfuckers. Yeah. Two rich motherfuckers. I don't want to hear about this shit. <laughs> like, you know, even with Ross, y'all know how I feel about William Roberts. Like, yo, I don't give a fuck, Drake. You got a cargo plane. He got a fucking plane. I don't give a fuck what he got. Bitch got his own plane. Seven, 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 my boy. Oh, right. oh, it says man. if you sing this, it's too late on the bottom. The fuck? Yeah. So, all right. So since we talking about beef, I told you fucking last week, man. I'm a, For YouTube, y'all ain't going to hit this, but fuck it. Yeah, that boy. Come on, man. Rick, 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 no. I told you that. 
The bitch can rap. R- Rick no don't reply to this. It's cause if you if you even give him an inkling that you gonna go in and get in that booth, he is on your ass. Pause. I mean, I mean of course dissing is dissing, so they got a lot to diss about one another. I mean, of course, everyone is always gonna refer to Ross as a CO. They both, they, should. they both some big ass liars, which as will make should. it interesting. Yes. And then I mean, <laughs> game has all types of shit because to talk about from 50 writing this shit, um, to the change of heart, to the shit when it was like you used to you you started out as a crip, now you're blood. Um you was a gangster with a tongue ring, and you got sued for sexual assault and all types of shit. So and they got uh, they they have all types of stuff to talk about one another. I mean, do I want to hear it in my mood that I am now? No. Why? I don't know, because I'm just not in a negative mood right now. Like, I'm trying oh, to come my best. From the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't mind it. I want it, because I think it would be funny. I don't think it would be, I don't think that Game and Ross would be like. We need to beef? Like, no, real life beef? Or? Like, not like Kendrick, where you talk about kids and shit. I think it would really just be bars. Like, he's talking about how fat that nigga is. And, he gonna talk about the fifty shit, and, and that's I think there's another reason why Ross ain't saying shit. Cause then you might get fifty to jump in this shit too. Cause fifty been on King Combs' ass. He been he, he might, but he don't like. I think, but he, he don't fuck with game either. So, but yeah. but it's like okay, well he was G Unit, and I you nigga he the opt, Ricky the opt. He kind of, so, but game did make G or not also. So he's, again, it's that's sticky. You never know. It's a sticky situation. It's sticky. It's yeah, just, I fucks with it, but I think that this one would be more funny than serious. Like it'll be really like just bars because. They Drake and, and Kendrick took that shit really I mean, far. you look at it as like even Ross, like I say, they were like, oh, Ross inserted himself in a Drake beef. Yes and no. I mean, Drake invited a man, ex-girlfriend, as soon as they broke up to his concert. So I would feel some type of way about a guy who I make money with and I break bread with. Like, bro, why are you sending my ex like to your show? Like front row tickets, like, yeah, you come, like, nah. So I understand why Ross did that shit. Dirty Mackin. We talked about that last episode. If you didn't catch that. Drake was doing a little Dirty Mackin. 219, Dirty Mackin. Um, and so then JC on, he's bored. He thought he was retired. And he, you know, he got something to say because he's bored. But he can rap. One Absolutely. thing about the game can rap. The Doctor's Advocate is one of my favorite albums ever. Like, I can listen to that album front to back. Even though he mentioned LeBron like 38 fucking times in that album. I like Jesus Peace. That's a classic to me. But I love that album. The Doctor's Advocate is That's the second one, right? Doctor Advocate too. Yeah, okay. Well I fuck with that. Yeah, I love I love I that fuck album. With that. But I mean, hey, if they battle, they battle. If Ross wanna say something, he don't. I know he's joking with him right now, laughing with him and shit like that. Like, bro, you broke. That's why you, you want me to get into it with you. So I don't know. But if it happens, it happens. Uh okay. Since we talking about uh, West Coast rappers, Ice Cube, uh, he sold uh, one of the the uh, was it the, the LA team for ten million inside of his Big Three league. I don't understand. Uh, the Big Three basketball league founded by Ice Cube has made a significant move by selling the rights to his LA based team for ten million to an investing group led by DCB Sports. The team is set to play a home in home games. In LA and marks the league's shift from touring, a touring model, to having teams based in a specific market. Starting in 2025, the league also plans to announce three more location based ownership groups before 2024. The big three season kicks off June 15th in Oakland with Toronto and UK expected to be among the new markets for the 12 man league. Um, Finally, it's coming to Baltimore. Um. I would support the big three because it's black owned and it's ice cube. I never really watched it because I can't, I don't like half court, but whatever. Right. But I support it. Mm-hmm. I, even if it's for me to put the TV on and the shit on mute, you have a viewer, mm-hmm. you get the stream. Um, I think to sell this, to sell it was dope to me, but I think why not make the big three a fucking league, like a real fucking league where, all right, we're going to LA. LA might have two teams like the, the Clippers. Well, I think in them. that's what he's trying to do. With, I, I with, hope with that's this, what I hope that's this, what it is. With this move. With this move. Because they don't play like a regular schedule like the NBA. So like you can go to the UK and run some games. 
go to Toronto or wherever and, or uh, Vancouver and run some games and, and be all over the place. You're not playing, playing like back to back because really it's just be weekend games. It's it never is, no weekday. So it. you can do that with the, with the OGs. These well, OGs I mean, too. Some of these guys still have contracts out of places and obligations and stuff like that though. So, But I'm saying within, within whatever they lock in as a season, whether it be three months or whatever. So – I, I fuck with this. If, there, if the goal is to create independent teams that, you know, he don't have to control no more, but he retains ownership of the league, oh, that's money. I think that's money. what he's doing, and I think that's going to help him get the eyes that he wants and the yeah. sponsorship that he wants because yeah. I think that's what he's looking for is the, is the sponsorship yeah. is the main thing. Um, and that's why he that's what he's been fighting uh, the NBA with. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the NBA claims that he's competing with them. And, like, bro, when I'm playing, your guys are done. And it, it is half court. It's not even the same it's shit. It's half court. And it's people that would, your product, your players, okay, that's playing. So why wouldn't you want to support that and help build that? So if the NBA is is fighting against them and Alvis, Adam Silver is against that, he's a bitch. So. Yeah, because that, that could be another. <clears throat> um another twist to the NBA All-Star Weekend. Like, you could Absolutely. add that instead of that skills challenge. Now, play big three rules where you do three on three. Yeah, you can coincide all of that. You WNBA know, that. girls and all of that shit. Like, play big three rules. Because you have women coaches, so. Bingo. And then you could put, you could play two games at one time because you could split the court in half. Yeah. So, yeah. Nah, I, I mean, it's, it's a cool look. I went twice. I went there inaugural season um, in Philly. It was crazy. I was so upset because we went to Philly to see AI play, and he literally played the week before and then just said, fuck it, I'm done. I can't hoop no more, and didn't play. So I was, Who, AI? AI. He, AI was like the face of it. Oh, that, I remember. That, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Year. But he wasn't the shit. He had the fat face and all, all that. Man. And he played like two games, and then the game before he went to Philly, he called it quits. So yeah. when we drove up to Philly, and he like, AI hey, not playing. I'm like, the fuck you mean? I don't want to see nothing by you but fucking <laughs> LF. And then I went again, but I'm happy this year. Last year, the playoff was here in D.C. I didn't go, um, but a regular season game will be here in Baltimore, and I'm glad, so I will be there in attendance, hopefully, God willing. Yes, sir. And check it out. Yes, sir. Uh, yo, L.A. Lakers. Um, they have they fired Darvin Ham last week. Bumpy. Week before last. Week before last. Yeah, they, died. they fired Darvin Ham, but... The leading candidate seems to be J.J. Redick. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I don't like it. Who do you who do you support? Other than, of course, Doc Rivers. Blake, Blake. It's not no, Blake Volk. No, not Blake. He's let his ass stay in Milwaukee. No, I'm talking um, about Doc Rivers. He in Milwaukee. Oh, that's right. He did. Oh, no, no. Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson. No, I would think um, probably the most qualified guy is Sam Cassell to be um, <clears throat> quite frank. He assistant somewhere? Yeah. Cause he used to coach. Uh, he still the, probably with Doc. He he, he normally didn't. He, didn't Sam because that was a head coach. No, something? just assistant. Okay. He normally is on Doc uh, staff. Doc staff. Um, I think he's done his due diligence, and I think it's his time. If Bumpy can get a job, um, Sam definitely deserves a job. Um, I don't think JJ Reddick, Like, what has he coached? What has he done? He's a he's a he's he has a mind. He has a basketball mind. It sound good. Um, I can talk to you about basketball. I can talk to you guys all day if I had a basketball part, and I can talk logic I, um, about basketball. I can talk a lot about it. You know who I think would, would be a good coach, but he got to prove it. You you gonna laugh me out the gym, but before you laugh me out this part room, think about what the fuck I'm. What he's a basketball man, and and he knows that he played. No chill, Gil. No. <laughs> you ain't even think about it. No. The boy knows basketball. He can, he can coach AAU. He can coach. The, now I see him break film down. He can coach AAU. NBA. He can coach high school ball. Um, I think he'll spin a swing on somebody, but. He can't coach pros. Why? Ego? Hit, yeah, just him, himself. He can't coach. It's his temperament. I would If Gil was going to coach my kid or train my kid in AAU, Sign me up. If he was going to teach my kid, coach my kid in high school, sign me up. You know he got a contract with somebody as an as a consultant. It's one he said it on his pod one for. Yeah, he was, and then I mean Kobe wanted him to be a coach also. He, I think he could do it. He high got, school, he, he got to get out of his ego. High school and AAU. I wouldn't want Gilbert Arenas to coach anything else, but he, that that nigga I, in him has to leave. Yeah, but um, 
I know, I know he says a lot of some of the shit he really do believe because it's just Gilbert. Then some of the shit is just for, you know, for shit. Shock by you. Mm-hmm. But JJ Reddick, he hasn't coached anything. So I don't think, um, I mean, granted, Steve Kerr didn't coach either and he stepped right Smoked in. Smoked it. And um, But he came into a ready made team that was ready to go. I know he's going to say that. But he's been coaching still. Like, he. he no, I mean, that was, was it. He was, he was ready, though. Like, all he needed that, was a chance. That team was ready. I, I'm good with JJ. With his pod, just keep continue to pod and pod with LeBron. LeBron doesn't need another yes man. Y'all know I love the king, but he doesn't need another yes man on the team. No. Um, what else is there? Shout out to Bronny James. Bronny James is um, uh, he has uh, smoked his tryout for for go his college. Um, his time in college, he's gonna go full time pro. You think he's gonna get drafted? Yes. Um, Lakers. No. If he get drafted by X team, you think they trade LeBron bustles his way there? Probably. Um, so the Lakers pick, they have the fifteenth pick and the fifty fifth pick. He'll so, draw the fifty five. So in the fifteenth, he won't make it. He won't be there. In the fifteenth pick, you really, really need someone for this Laker team. Um, and Bronny isn't the piece. Um, so what do you think they they pick somebody at fifteen and then trade back up to come get Bronny? Because you have to. Uh, as an owner, I would bring him even if I don't need Bronny at a with a lower pick. I would bring I would pick Bronny to put butts in seats. That's the thing. See, so um, this draft is like one of those so so drafts. This, this is one of the weakest ones I mean, in a while. I mean, you're gonna have these drafts because of um, the one and duns and stuff like that. So. <laughs> Really, no one in this draft. Um, but what you do is you draft Bronny. If you're somebody that, if your guy is gone, and you like fuck it, you draft Bronny and you ho- you hold him for hostage for the Lakers. What the fuck they gonna give up? They don't have nothing to give you. They, they ain't giving they up AD. They have their picks. What all them draft picks? They, ha- they have. They don't have a whole bunch of draft picks, but they they have, not worth no value because they gonna they go have, to the playoffs. They have, f- they have future draft picks again. If it, so they if, had their draft picks back, so they all their draft picks was gone because of a, the AD trade, the right. AD. But now this is their first year that they have picks. See, before they wasn't drafting shit, right? But they have a first round draft pick now. So you use that to um, barter for Bronny. I think because Bron is going to play with his son. Brian, Brian ain't getting picked at 15. I think it's just going to be a shock to everybody, and then it's going to be he like. He can't be. Uh, somebody need to get fired. I love. Uh, that's Rob my nephew. Palenka. I, that's my nephew. <laughs> I love Bronny. Bronny's 6'1 with a 40 inch vertical. It's crazy. 41 and a half. 40 and a half. I don't want to be disrespectful. <laughs> um, jump higher than Westbrook. Yeah, he do. Um, Westbrook was 35. Shit. Bronny is 40. So that lets that let you know. But Shorty been balling. Um, hey, his stock level still can go up and continue to get higher. He's been having good um, draft pre camps so long as he stays healthy. I mean, hey, his shit, his star might shoot up. You never know. So I hope he do. Okay. But the uh, Lakers be crazy if I, they draft I like him his, at 15. I like his expert right here. Um, uh, I got a few randoms for you, though. Hold up. We still on sports. Go ahead. What you got? The NFL's. Uh, schedule came out yesterday. Talk about the schedule. I asked you, yeah, let's, yeah, 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 so, yeah. Um, schedule came out. I think we eight them Jets is in Pittsburgh. I told Nell, are we pulling up? I don't know what the answer you gave it's, me. It's possible because there's so much going on within that week <laughs> seven, eight, and nine. Like fuck the part that week. We just because <laughs> so you got the Ravens. Of course, everybody from Baltimore know the Ravens open up in Kansas City banner night. That we might we, we Monday night. That shit crazy. Uh, I think we play y'all y'all. Op- they open up better night where? Who, who I think we open up in San Francisco. Y'all open up San. Yeah. The Ravens open up in Kansas City. Well, they like, oh, the Ravens. They normally always do the AFC versus the NFC championship is always playing. It's not like because of anything else. They always do that shit every year. So that 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 game is going to be lit. Um, the Jet San Fran game is going to be lit. We open up with Atlanta in Atlanta. Um, 
was thinking about going to that game. I actually look up the tickets, uh, look up the flights to Atlanta. That shit is under three hundred dollars, and I was damn near pulled the trigger right there just uh, on the flight. Like we week seven. wait a minute, we week seven, October twentieth, eight twenty p.m. And October twentieth is the Stacks. greatest day. Oh, no. October twentieth is the greatest day ever God ever created. It's my birthday, so I was uh looking. I'm like, man, we got the Raiders. No, hold up. Who do we? Have? I was looking up. I think it was the Cowboys. It was it was an order that was like, man, we can go to the Cowboys game because they play in Pittsburgh, or fly out to Vegas because I don't I only need this much of a space to to have a reason to go to fucking Vegas. Um, and they play out there, and then we I think we play you guys right after. So it's just like boom, boom, boom. So I don't know. I Ain't don't no know. time out. So, so they got got the Steelers. Down. Steelers play. They got a. That's a night game. October the sixth, they play the Cowboys. Then the following week, we play the Raiders. Um, in um at the Raiders, and then that following week, we play the New York Jets on my birthday, eight twenty game. Ooh, prime time. I don't know. That's my. That's Sunday night, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But gotta figure out something. So. Yeah, it's going to be... Um, Teams with the hardest schedule of 2024. Pittsburgh ranks number one. No, the Ra- I think it's the Ravens. No. It should be the Ravens. Ra- they say y'all rank number one. And the teams with the easiest schedule, we, Atlanta Falcons one, Chargers two, Chicago Bears three, New York Jets is four. Easiest. Really? They got us predicted at 11 and five, 12 and five. Oh, wow. But uh, so for my New York Jets, uh, real quick, we open up Monday night. Uh, September 9th at San Francisco. Then we play the tit- the Titans at, in Tennessee. Then home opener week three. We play the Patriots trash. Home again for the Broncos. Then we go to the Minnesota. Then we play the Bills at home week seven. The Pittsburgh Steelers hopefully now stop bushing. We gonna watch these niggas lose. Uh, then we go back to Pittsburgh. Then we play Texans, Cardinals, Colts, Seahawks, Dolphins, Jags, Rams. Then we end the season with uh, the Bills and the Jets. Let me see. What is Black Friday? Do we play Black Friday again? Uh, no. We got a we got a bye week, so we're not playing on Black Friday. Oh, uh, we played Christmas. Yeah, no, we played the first Black Friday game. Um, and they said the Jets was like, we will play always play Black Friday if you let us. We'll play run out black uniforms, but we're not playing Black Friday, so I'm disappointed in that. But well, yeah, we have no the Ravens play. They play San Diego on Christmas. It's dope. It's I'm, dope. That's so. That's so. That's so many fucking. Is I'm so used to sports. NFL being is that's Thanksgiving. NBA has Christmas, but now NFL just and, said yeah, all over. We the taking place. everything, yeah. and those games is going to be on what Netflix. Netflix has picked up NFL games. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Yeah. Oh, so we got the Chiefs at home on Christmas. Woo. That's a good game. Woo. Good game. And the um, Ravens will be at Houston Christmas. So we play first a one o'clock game and the Ravens come right behind Bingo. and play at four thirty. So that's that that'd be that'd be cool. Uh closing thoughts, man. Let's get out of here. Get out. Almost out of here. Um good fucking pod too. Dope pod. Um I've been I've been talking to Jay, like, yo, I've been on social media. I'm like, yo. Everything just been so negative. And I know at times I can be a negative person, but I try my best to always like be positive, see a lot of positive things. I'm an asshole, but I promise you that I am a nice guy at heart. Like I'd be really wanting to always like be nice and positive. It takes a lot to be like mean and upset and shit like that. But it's like I've been on social media lately and it's just like everything is just so negative, man. Like Mother's Day is just with so much negativity online. Um, oh my god, like I'm a, you know, I'm a comments guy. So looking at the comments from when Diddy was just posting, um, I, I really wish he just turned his comments off. Like people were saying so much wild negative, shit. wild shit to this man and don't know nothing about anything. And like it just fucking sucks. So like, I mean, just be positive, guys. Like, and mind your fucking business. Like, did what Diddy doing is what Diddy doing. Did he do it? Did he not do it? I don't fucking know. But just like just be positive, man. I just want to spread some some type of fucking love because right now, if it wasn't for this podcast, if it wasn't for you guys, I'd be off that shit.
I ain't even gonna hold you. Like I was going through <laughs> one of my things. I was like, Jay, yo, this shit. Like I don't, I didn't want to be on none of it. I didn't want to see anything because it's just so much negativity is out of this world. So that's like, um, spread some type of love, some type of pos- positive shit, positive vibes. Uh, so that shit. Uh, mine is uh, if you have to. If you have to talk to more than three people about the same problem, you don't want help. You want attention. Mm-hmm. And a bonus one. If you cost me my peace, you got to go because you cost too fucking much. Mm. Uh, been a good fucking pot, bro. Yep. Love you, dog. Uh. Trying to get out of here before we uh, get out of here. I want to shout out those that waiting to form, those that waiting to form, those that waiting to form in the future. Shout out to those that hang out the VA all day. Shout out to the United States of Baltimore. Zone, Zone 18. 18. And the rest of the DMV, special shout out to PG County. Also, like, comment, subscribe. It costs you nothing and it goes a long way. Please. Uh, let's take the algorithms and follow us on our social media platforms. The shit is always at the bottom so fucking with throughout the whole podcast. Yep. Again, remember, we're on vacation next week. Playlist coming out. We're going on vacation in July. Nell will be dropping his. R and B playlist. Uh, he he been upstairs practicing. Yes, sir. He been practicing. So uh, I don't know what we gonna call it, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna have him go through the whole process like I do, artwork, everything. So we mm-hmm. gonna we gonna have that shit popping. Oh, uh, I'm in the podcast with some gunner man. Uh, this song is called Dollar Sign. Spread love, not hate. Welcome to the Jane Friends podcast.